Have you ever seen a rainbow in the sky after a rain? I think most of us have seen one, and uh, did you ever wonder where it came from or what it actually symbolizes? Hi, I'm Pastor John Sankrat from Heights Christian Church. And what we are doing as a congregation is going through the Bible in five years. We invite you to join us wherever you are by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Six days a week, we read a small part of Scripture and take just one thing from that portion to help us be more like Jesus. And then on Sunday, our services are online on this very channel, and our sermons are over the material we discuss during the week. And so in today's reading, we'll read about life after leaving the ark and God's commands not only to Noah and his sons, but his promise to all mankind and to other animals as well. Uh, we'll read over that. So let's begin in Genesis chapter 9. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth, and on all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. Surely for your life blood, your life blood I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every beast I will require it, and from the hand of man. From the hand of every man's brother I will require the life of man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. And as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is a sign of the covenant. This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two, his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on the, both on their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Then he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants he shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. So all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. 
So if you've ever wondered why animals avoid being around humans, now we know why. God has given all of them to be food for us. So they fear us. I don't blame them. In verse 2, um, and first part of verse 3, we see it says that, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth and every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth and all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And that explains why animals run from us, right? I walk outside and there's a bunny rabbit next to the front porch. And he sees me and runs off. And they're just cute. Anyway, the thing that I want to discuss is in verses uh, 8 through 17. So let's look at that part again. I'm getting there. All right. Then Noah's, Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and and all flesh that is on the earth. The rainbow that we see in the air is the sign of the covenant. It is a reminder of the promise of God and that He will never again destroy the earth with a flood. This promise was not only made to all mankind, but it was made to every living creature that was there with them, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth, and all that went out of the ark, every beast of the earth. He says this a couple of times because it's important. We read that in verse 10. That is the meaning of the rainbow. And when I see it used for other purposes, such as showing pride in a sin that was part of the reason the earth was flooded to begin with, and one of the reasons that Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, I cannot help but think that it is being used to mock God. And that is a very dangerous place to be. When you mock God, you make a mockery of the signs of His promise to the earth. Galatians 6 tells us what happens when we mock God. Let's take a look at that real quick. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he also sows of his, to his flesh. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So we see that we sow what we reap. And it is time that the mockery stop and that we seek forgiveness and reconciliation with God for these actions. Let's take a look at a couple of verses here and I want you to understand some things that are here. Um... This is uh, Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you to understand that, that the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And let's look at Romans 3.23 as well, For all have, fall, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So even in the scriptures we understand that none of us are sinless, not even me, or anybody else that's here. And so when I plea with you to stop mocking God's um, sign 
of his covenant with mankind not to flood the earth. It's because I want you to understand that if you are mocking God, you will reap something that you do not want. Uh, so go to God in prayer and seek reconciliation and right relationship with him before it's too late. And I hope you got something out of today's video, and I hope to see you again tomorrow.